It's a boat. No. It's a truck. No. It's a duck. Yes. In the Arkansas town of Hot Springs, not just the buildings are special. Even on the streets there is something to see what is not found everywhere. Old, weird-looking trucks used to transport the tourists through the city. They are more than 70 years old in the meantime. They are survivors of World War II. The famous amphibious vehicles, abbreviated D-U-K-W, or short, Ducks. Reason enough to have a closer look on these magnificent trucks whose history started in 1942 when the Allies introduced a new weapon. With the beginning of World War II and the constant bombardment of the port cities, the Allied forces realized that a special craft was needed to ferry troops and supplies directly from ship to shore. The answer came on June 3, 1942, when a pilot version of a six-wheeled, two-and-a-half-ton amphibious truck was ready for testing. It proved reliable and versatile, and an initial order of 600 was placed. Scheduled delivery date, December 31, 1942. Specialists for boats and engineering worked hand-in-hand. Hand. The DUKW was designed by Rod Stevens Jr. of Sparkman and Stevens Yacht Designers, Dennis Pulston, a British deepwater sailor resident in the US, and Frank W. Spear, Reserve Officers Training Corps Lieutenant from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. The DUKW was built around a GMC six-wheel drive military truck with the addition of a watertight hull and a propeller. It was powered by a 270 cubic inch 4 liter GMC straight six engine. A 5 speed overdrive transmission drove the transfer case for a propeller, then a 2 speed transfer case to drive the axles. The propeller and front axle were selectable from their transfer case. A power takeoff on the transmission drove the air compressor and winch. The duck weighed 13,000 pounds, 5.9 tons empty, and operated at 50 miles, 80 kilometers per hour on road, and 5.5 knots on water. It was 31 feet long, 8 feet wide, 7 feet high, with a canvas top down, and nearly 9 feet high with a top up. The DUKW was not armored, but plated with sheet steel between 1 16th and 1 8th inches, 1.6 to 3.2 millimeters, to minimize weight. A bilge pump system kept it afloat if the thin hull was breached by holes up to 2 inches, 51 millimeters, in diameter. Weapons? One in four DUKWs mounted a 50 caliber Browning heavy machine gun on a ring mount. One technical highlight, the DUKW was the first vehicle to allow the driver to vary the tire pressure from inside the cab, an accomplishment of a Spears device. The tires could be fully inflated for hard surfaces, such as roads, and less inflated for softer surfaces, especially beach sand. This added to great versatility as an amphibious vehicle, a feature now standard on many military vehicles. Nevertheless, the start for the ducks was hard, as it had to convince the soldiers first. 
because originally the military rejected the idea, preferring traditional ships, landing boats and trucks. But when a US patrol boat ran aground on a sandbar, an experimental DOKW happened to be in the era for a demonstration. Strong winds and heavy surf made a rescue of the stranded Coast Guard's men impossible for conventional vehicles. But it was no problem for the DOKW. The military opposition to the amphibious truck was gone. As a United States military vehicle, this new amphibious truck got a code. DUKW. D represents 1942, the year of its design. U indicates a utility vehicle. K means all-wheel drive capability. And W signifies dual rear driving axles. But it wasn't long before American soldiers looked at the code and the vehicle's land and water capabilities and, in typical GI fashion, simplified it to the nickname Duck. The United States Army calls its newest mobile weapon the Duck. Amphibious, two and one half ton trucks, they operate on land or in water. Navigating rough seas like Navy barges, the ducks are the last word in mechanized equipment. Powerful, capable of performing a dozen different operations, the duck has proven itself an efficient weapon against the Axis in Africa and in the South Pacific. Here shown in actual battle zone operations, the ducks are swung from ships, ferrying supplies and equipment from transports to troops on shore. These two-way trucks are capable of carrying invasion forces from ship side right into battle. The DUKW was supplied to the US Army, US Marine Corps and Allied Forces. 2,000 were supplied to Great Britain, 535 were acquired by Australian forces and 586 were supplied to the Soviet Union. They built their own version, by the way, after the war, under the name BAV-485. The UKWs were initially sent to Guadalcanal in the Pacific Theater, but were used by an invasion force for the first time in Europe. During the Sicilian invasion, Operation Husky, in the Mediterranean, they were an important part of General George S. Patton's invasion force in July and August of 1943. On D-Day, they were used on the beaches of Normandy and France in the Battle of the Scheldt in Belgium and the Netherlands, Operation Veritable at the Dutch-German border and Operation Plunder to cross the River Rhine. The principal use was to ferry supplies from ship to shore and tasks such as transporting wounded combatants to hospital ships or operations in flooded landscape. Throughout the European theatre and the island hopping campaign in the Pacific, the ducks proved indispensable. By the end of their production in 1945, a total of 21,147 DOKWs were produced. After World War II, reduced numbers were kept in service by the United States, Britain, France and Australia. Many of them were stored. The US Army reactivated and deployed several hundred at the outbreak of the Korean War and they were used extensively to bring supplies ashore during the battles of Busan and Incheon. Ex-US Army DUKWs were transferred to the French military after World War II 
and were used by the French Marines and Navy. Many of them in overseas territories like French Indochina during the First Indochina War. Others were used after World War II by civilian organizations such as the police, fire departments and rescue units. The Australian Army even lent two DUKWs and a crew to Australian National Antarctic Research Expeditions from 1948 until 1970. In the US, one of the last DUKWs manufactured in 1945 was lent to a fire department during the Great Flood of 1993 at the Mississippi and in 2005 ducks were deployed to help in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. The DUKW maneuvered through floodwaters, transporting victims stranded on their rooftops to helicopter pads throughout New Orleans. One DUKW was for many years in use by the THW of Germersheim in Germany, a state organization supplying technical support. But also, after the war, thousands of ducks ended their life by a silent death to rust, from the shores of Normandy to the scrapyards of their countries. So, while the majority of vehicles stationed stateside were decommissioned or used by communities for everything from firefighting to water rescue, a man named Bob Unger had another idea. In the summer of 1946 he started the original Wisconsin Ducks with the former army surplus duck he owned, after his friend Mel Flath had the idea for rides, and Helen Raab leased them land she owned between Lake Dalton and the Wisconsin River. One year later, the Dells Corporation was founded and started tours through the era filled with fern dells, rocky gorges and wilderness known as the Lower Dells Scenic Park. With the guests grew the herd of ducks because more and more decommissioned ducks were purchased in the years following. Starting 1953, a new company's structure, now called Dell's Amphibian Lines, gave the ducks canopies, painted the vehicles in many colors and built a new duck dock at the current location. The idea soon spread all over the world. The DUKW and their successors from the Vietnam War time turned into tour boats, buses on all continents, duck dance all over the planet. Seventy percent of the planet are covered by water. Rivers and canals are the main trade routes of mankind. Millions of cities are located at oceans, lakes and big rivers. They are tourist destinations too, or the building of bridges doesn't make economic sense. Therefore, some companies are now manufacturing new models of amphibious buses. The ducks will never die.